Yo, we're live. <laughs> we're live. Shit. Yeah. Did I do it. All right. Do I have to scoop this game then? Yeah. Do I have to be a I professional. So. I think we. Oh, uh, I'm lucky. Sorry, Talish, our opponent. Did you take a month off, and this is how you come back. Dude, listen. The Man. grind never stops, Teddy. <laughs> The grind never. Well, I I was washed as shit for Pro Tour too, so like I I can't yeah, stop. Yeah, we have to get into your uh your breakdown of the weekend. The yeah. fine folks uh got a little bit of a preview on the Tuesday stream from me, but we can we can rehash a little bit. This will become buy list episode fifty two. Uh, for the you. folks that uh, don't like to watch us live, I don't know who those people are nobody 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 we have four total viewers so that's fine and one of them is me it's just simmering right now yeah we uh, cook in we cook in nate we have so much to talk about dude it's been a while um i guess we should probably start with pro tour huh yeah i mean we can always go i mean nick already mentioned it in the chat oh Um, yeah you have a lot of explaining to do (laughs) i'm always right listen (laughs) Listen, after week one of ProQuest, I will be 100% factually correct. Draw my unplayable. <laughs> Actually unplayable. We finally got there, boys. We it's finally unplayable. got there. The PSYOPs has ended. Yeah. It's finally become fact. Yeah. Oh, so, I don't even need this. Let's, uh, yeah, well, I guess let's start there. Um, how, did your pro, how did your pro tour go? I mean, we could start like 30 foot. 30,000 foot view, you know, the traveling, the hanging out with buds and then get into your uh your games if you want to go that deep. Uh I don't want to go that deep. It was uh, <laughs> chronically depressing. Um Pro Tour was a blast. Um I got in on Wednesday. Um we couldn't check into our Airbnb until like 4, which was kind of sucky. So um we went to the AC and we did some like drafts in the lobby with a bunch of the bunch of the dudes. Um, it was great to see everybody again. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun of Michael Hamilton real quick because I know he won't watch and I love him. Um, literally wouldn't take so it, we're in downtown LA, right? Not the safest place in the world to be. Um, yeah, I so, would say like the couple blocks where I st- I hung around were perfectly fine, but you go much further than that. The like the ghost, yeah. uh, the ghost high rise, like that was right next to the event was that was sketch. quite a look. Yeah, that <laughs> was, was like, interesting. What is happening here? I looked it up, yeah. and it, it they just ran out of money in 2019 and just stopped building it. I was like, cool. <laughs> impressive yeah. an impressively half built structure yeah um so we're like doing drafts and stuff and then there was like the team tournament so we like popped over there real quick then we got to go back to the airbnb and instead of getting just like an uber because it was going to be like 10 minutes for the uber michael's like we have great feet and it's only 15 minutes away and i was like yes and it's a bunch of people who are just a look like nerds none of us look like <laughs> Like we're like, that person's a normal human being. We're all nerds. All right. Yeah. You see a the flock of us and it's good like at fab, but uh you guys ain't looking too tough. No, we aren't looking <laughs> tough at all. Um, so it's like me, Mara, Michael Hamilton, uh Michael Fong, and Travis. There's like five of us. And I was like, this is not the most intimidating crew, but at least there's five of us. <laughs> yeah. But it is like seven o'clock at night. And we're all wheeling our freaking suitcases back to the Airbnb. I'm like, no way, there's dude. no shot. The only reason we probably didn't get mugged is because, like, I don't want to have to deal with those people's, like, clothes. Like, it's just too much work. You know, we'll catch them on a different day. Bro, I thought um, for sure this story was going to be like, we got two blocks away and we're like, call the Uber now. <laughs> No, 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 no. I wanted to the entire time. Uh, I was like, why would we not just pay $9 for an Uber when like, that's like positive EV in my mind. Uh, oh, not 100%. getting murdered, positive EV. Yeah, positive. Luckily, Michael, <clears throat> theme of the weekend, um, liked to risk it for the biscuit on the EV and he p- it paid off for him there. Um, so Thursday, 
we pretty much did drafts like most of the day at the Airbnb, which was the Airbnb was actually super dope. Yeah. The surrounding area, not great. Shout out to the Mexican bakery. The Mexican bakery was lit. Yeah. Like nice. egg Teresa tortas. Mm, that's what we did like every morning. Um, and then end of the day, uh, my cousin actually works at SpaceX. So uh, he was able to hook us up with a tour. So a couple of us went to uh, go tour SpaceX, which was awesome. Yeah. So um, that was a lot of fun. And then Pro Tour started. So I played KO. You know, that was the, uh, <clears throat> SpaceX is probably a better use of time than the uh, player reception. Oh. 100% it was. Player reception, because I actually realized I didn't talk about this, and before we moved past it in the weekend yeah. timeline, uh, player reception was very good. Um, yeah. Lots of hype. The food was, like, top-notch. It's probably... I mean, Barcelona was, like, pretty good because it was, like, Iberian ham, and, like, it was, like, all right. The food was really, like, pretty pretty stellar, I would say. Like, mm -hmm. it was really good um so like they're improving on that front and then the hype video was sweet and um just the amount of information i think lss understands that uh you know they kind of set the bar and they need to like provide like real info at these events also worlds being at Jap in japan they definitely need to announce that <laughs> right now <laughs> like, yeah yeah that was a good call there was no like oh give us two months <laughs> like, yeah no, you got to do this now so i mean we got like six months of lead time on that one which is yeah, awesome perfect um yeah the i like i think the players banquets are a cool thing i i'm never going to pass up on something else though for players banquet yeah, spacex is like crazy, yeah dude that's all it's yeah it was super cool. Um, Do not blame. So, me. yeah. Um, and then I, I decided, to, I, I decided to play KO for the Pro Tour. Um, I felt very confident in my drafting ability. I so the reason, like, basically, I've been like non-existent for the last month was I pivoted like two weeks before Pro Tour from Dory to KO. Um, I felt very good in draft, so I just felt like I needed to get into draft. Yeah. and let my draft record carry me um and i felt like uh michael had been working on a ko deck that i thought was very clean and smooth and unfortunately i'm just bad at the game um and michael hamilton is good at the game and it did not work out well for me uh i also had like a i had really bad variants day one i i have this issue at pro tours where like when you have a card that says draw a card on it i don't draw those so <laughs> in baltimore uh day one four games i drew one three of a kind um i still went to two i drew one three of a kind and was able to resolve it um wild, actually and in day one of the pro tour i discarded as many blood rush fellows as i drew or played in the two blood rush fellows i got to play were after an azalea went Turn one, knock, fatigue shot, inertia. And I was like, ooh, no doubt. This is fine. I've got a blood rush. We can make this work. And then my hand was like, uh, I blood rushed, pitching a yellow, unfortunately, and then drew into blood rush pulping uh, and another red. So I'm like, <laughs> blood rush? Draw two more reds, discard my pulping, and I'm like, swing big for eight? End of turn. Oh, wow. um, and those are the two blood rushes I got to play. So um, it didn't go well. I went to one in draft. Um, and then Why did you guys, uh, not to back you up a little bit, because I think yeah. it's interesting. Maybe you can talk about it a little bit. You said you swerved right off of Dory, which Dory showed up, I would say, I would say in a big way, right? Dory, God, yeah. Dory's been non-existent. Um, the Runaways, most of their team was on it. Uh, yeah. I was listening to their podcast. They seem very confident. I talked to Cody, good friend of mine, Dan, as well, and they were yeah. very hyped about it. So did you just, did the did the meta play out? I guess maybe talk about that a little bit. I think that's an interesting yeah. tidbit. So we were not on Axes. We were on 
a like aggressive aggressively slanted dawn blade version yeah when it came down to testing we noticed about like three to four weeks before pro tour that um uh victor was like basically unwinnable yeah bravo was fine bravo was probably favored but victor was actually unwinnable because you're never going to win a clash so they basically start at like the equivalent of like 61 life because the trounces, the trounces all draw cards and the test of strength all draw cards. So like you're, you're fighting a very uphill battle. We tried to board into like a, like a dual wield, uh, sabers kind of build, um, to try to combat that just to stay lower to the ground, um, and present more attacks. Cause like, it's very easy for them to like, just be like, here's three cards. I'll draw a card and I'll throw my big dumb thing from Arsenal. And it's like, yeah. I am so far behind right now. Um, yeah. But then even with the dual, the dual wield builds, like as soon as you got pummeled twice, the game was over because you were too far behind. You could keep keep even with them, but like as soon as they pummeled you, you just died. Um, Victor didn't really so. show up all that well. It didn't show up that much either. So I think no. the Dory players that found the axes obviously max was in the finals um yeah i think actually the runaways did really well in cc yes uh, a yeah. lot of them got nuked by draft uh go watch their podcast they'll talk all about it don't take yeah. my word for it but i think you know i got to that part of the podcast so um yeah interesting right they kind of just bet on victor not not popping up which that build is a lot better in the victor their build is like i think they still said they have problems with the deck though like i'm i wouldn't be surprised if they did but i think that that's it was probably like a 40 60 instead of like yeah. a like 10 90 because right, like yeah. it, me and uh andrew basically like smashed 10 games of victor into dory and it was like oh like the one person would get really freaking frustrated and be like okay it's your turn <laughs> and then we'd swap back and we went like one and nine because it was just like oh, in the like, the yeah. one game that was like the one game we won was like Iron Song, Determination, Steel Blade Supremacy into like Puncture as the reaction. So it was just like you juiced all the armor and everything um, and just dealt a shitload of damage and got counters. So um, it was the correct meta call. We just got scared off of it, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Because that deck was specifically designed to target KO and uh, Dromai and be good. At, and it was very good into Azalea. So like, three of the top four decks it was very good into and then it was um uh, bad into victor and it would have it wouldn't have been terrible into axes but it was definitely not the best in the axes because they have so much they have so many reactions right yeah hmm. yeah that's pretty so, cool that uh i mean it's cool to see like a uh, brew show up to the pro tour uh yeah. Not, I mean, I guess like, you can't really call it hidden brew, right? I mean, because I won with axes, which is probably like a hint. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of like, hmm, what's what's happening here? Let's see. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, continuing on to Saturday, uh, you made it through draft. Um, oh, I, I played the calling Saturday because I was a scrub. Oh, yeah, that's right, Friday. Yep, so yeah. then you moved on to the calling on Saturday went uh pretty much equally as poorly uh round one ko again it's the yes i played ko again because i was like one the variance was super high in like against me like it can't be that bad again yeah and i like the dawn blade dory was that we built was like very targeted towards like ko dromai azalea as like some of like some of the top decks um and into like a open meta that would be a calling it's a little scarier because you have no idea what people are running. Like people are going to run some random ass shit into you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Wild. So it was like, K was just like a very good, like, like floor deck. And it's just going to let me like yeah. play to my strengths and try to like outscale people. Um, I sit down people next to me, complete jabronis on both sides. I sit down across from Julian Felix, something he's like a he's a very good player from switzerland yeah um he tested with uh the arsenal pass guys yeah uh like that whole crew and i'm just like i've got like these these people are literally talking about their hands to each other like next to me 
at a pro level event like, and i'm like so chill out either side uh, dude like one of them was like oh dude like he looked at blood, blood rush bellows and he was like oh dude i drew another blood rush bellows i don't know what to do and i'm just like what's happening here like if you decide not to play that blood rush bells he just knows you have a blood rush bellows in your arsenal like um and so i get i get paired to the him uh he was on dash io and i just got trounced um deck again did not show up saw no blood rush bellows to, like anywhere um next round i saw like, just, like 40 you no, no 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 it was a little bit more respectful respectable <laughs> than that um yeah uh, i almost fatigued him i i did not though i i, I ended up dying in the end um it has it turns out a deck with like 12 no blocks is not very good at fatigue but it was like my only strategy because i was drawing like <laughs> like blue 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 red and like the red wasn't particularly good yeah. to even like cast and i was just like i guess i'll just block with all these crappy cards yeah. maybe i'll fatigue you because he did burn like all of his high octanes and tomes in like the first two turns and i was still at like oh, 36 so you're like there's a chance so i was like like i don't know that you can you have that much more gas left yeah. in the tank and then he cast two maximum velocities and i i promptly died um so I played a Kasai round two. Um, that did not go in my favor. It was a very close match. Um, I literally died to um, blue Iron Song response. Cool. That's that. Basically, the beats of my weekend is like blue Iron Song response <laughs> killed me. Yeah. On brand. On brand for this weekend. Um, I rallied back out of the O2 bracket to go two two. Um, I played into a Katsu who um promptly kicked my face in um it was a very close match he comboed in like a really weird turn and i got everything and i was like i'm still at 25 he's at like 30 yeah. but i have no hand and all of his equipment is gone so i'm like this isn't terrible this is playable um as it turns out blood earth bellows is not a great card when all three of them are in the bottom 12 cards of your deck True. Sorry. Um so hard to win games that way um yes, and I'm, I'm dead for dead for the tournament at that point i ended up five three um so rally back played some played some great games of ko like the deck finally it was like you're out of the tournament great do you want to see what the deck is supposed to do because here it is and it was like <laughs> you play the blood rush bellows you play the bear fangs thing you go really above rate you just do good numbers all the time and stuff and i was like where were you five rounds ago? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that was you could have been like, you didn't have to get an IV drip like Majin Bay in the middle of the tournament. So, but then he ended Honestly, up top eighting and then making the finals. So that is the wildest like, freaking story. I probably would have been, <laughs> I probably would have played better if I was like just vomiting everywhere because that's <laughs> kind of what it felt like. I was just like, that, this is my deck right now. It's just vomiting everywhere. So, yeah. Um, but it it was a very very bad weekend for me performance wise. Um, but had an absolute blast with the team. Um, great to see you again. Yeah. Um, we don't see each other that often. I don't know. We, we lived like three hours apart, so yeah. um, it was great to see you again. Great to meet a lot of the people that like um, watch, support us. Um, uh, so a couple of people recognized me. Someone told me they recognized my voice, but had no idea who I was. <laughs> and I was like, listen, I'll take it. Like I handed him like at the end of the round, I gave out one of the, the go again, little Ted tokens. Yeah. And I was, he's like, Oh, that's where I know you from. And I was like, yeah. He's like, I knew yeah. I knew that voice. I was like, sure. I did. I, I appreciate the, the voice. Um, I, so. <clears throat> yeah, I kept running into this weekend. It was funny. I kept running into like the problem of, where like the introductions were real weird. So like, hi, I'm Ted. And they'd be like, yeah, I know. I'm like, like, why is this? Like, this is so weird. And then I get skittish about introducing myself. It was a weird, it was kind of funny in that way. I was just like, what yeah. is happening right now? Um, yeah, I, it is very, um, very odd feeling to like respond that way. Like, I know who you are. It's like, yeah. 
that's that's I'm 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 weird about um and like shout out to oh gosh what is the artist's name I can't remember the artist's name now uh is it the artist yeah. um the ravenous rabble dude oh yeah is it Ardo is he is it Ardo yeah. shout out to that yeah. guy yeah yeah um yeah he's a band boss. Of, oh, dude nice. hit his art is sick I got a I got a rainbow foil bios update. That has like his signature on it. It looks amazing. I also got a Ravenous Rebel mat, the new the new yeah, art. So I picked one of those up instantly. I was like, yeah, I'm buying one of these. It was so sick. Yeah. It was so yep. awesome. Yeah. Um yeah, my weekend. I didn't I was do... gonna say, what about your weekend, Ted? Yeah, so I got there on Thursday. Um, met up with a buddy of mine. Uh, we were bunking together at the AC. Super nice hotel. Uh very expensive. Did you stay with Judah? I did stay with Judah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So shout out to Judah. Yeah. Shout out to Judah. Um, cool dude. First time meeting him in person, been talking to him for a long time. Um, yeah. So got there on Thursday, did some hanging, did some drafts, um, got absolutely train wrecked. <laughs> uh, Michael Fung was like, yeah, after the draft, he's like, geez, I was really hoping you would have noticed that it was like there was no rares left or something of this. And I was like, yeah, not that good. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Wait, who are you I drafting just, with? Um, Michael. He's just like, I was really hoping that you would have seen that <laughs> it was the brute rares were gone and didn't see that there was or like it was something to the do with like. Comments. Yeah, it was something to do with like commons and rares. Dog. And I was just like, I it's not like I've never not noticed. It's like I've noticed that signal before, but I just did not. I was just not paying attention to it. And just like, you know, why, Ted, let it wreck me. Because you didn't let me do the draft analysis video. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you could have been cute for could've, Nets, dude. Could have been cute. No. Could have been cute. I could have taught I you did, the ways. My one okay, book you could, Nats was, you could have one of these, dude. Yeah. It's true. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't want to relive that road to Nats. I thought I had a good shot at that one, but. You did. You did. Luck. You played well. Um, But yeah, so got there, just did some hanging out. Friday, um, Friday, I woke up, got in line for the James White thing again, because I like to go on Friday because. I feel like I don't want to take other people's spots on Saturday and Sunday because of like, mm -hmm. if this is like your first time like getting to meet him or whatever, there's limited chairs. So I kind of just try to hop in there like as soon as possible on Friday. Um, it was really cool. I, I went up, chatted with him a bit. He remembered me from Barcelona. Um, he gave me another popped collar to give away, which is like super sick. Um, you know, asked how the channel's going, all that stuff. So we had a nice chat. Um, got him to sli sign a sleigh for me. Nice. <laughs> a rainbow Dude, foil sleigh that I had. Just like actually trolling him. I think he, yeah, I think he tried to call me on it too. Because he's like, why is this card so special to you? And I was like, oh, fuck. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and to be fair. Yeah. Uh, if I ever get to talk to him like more than five minutes, I'll explain to him that we that card was spoiled while we were doing one of these live. And I think if you go back and watch my reaction, it's like just pain, like just, I just pure pain. Because you were like, Ted, it's a instant destroy an ally. And I was like, nope, nope. <laughs> Anyways, but the quote on it is very cool. So it's kind of neat to have, you know, uh, I still cherish it. It's it'll be a nice little piece. Um, Dude, he probably thinks that like you actually think that's like a really cool lore piece now, and he's like, I'm gonna put more lore pieces in there for Ted. Please no. <laughs> Stop you right there. Ooh, um, shit. So I went and talked to him. It was a great. It was. It's just always a great experience. Dude's super cool. Um, if you're ever at a big event where he's doing those, um, jump in there. Yeah, and yep. like don't. Don't kind of him and ah about it. Just get in there, go talk to him. Uh, very approachable. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome, uh, awesome things. So, I think Friday, I you know the rest of the day just kind of like hung out, did some stuff. Um, 
played the epot side events things like that and then uh saturday more side events uh i decided to go against the calling and use my fable ticket for an epot which was like fine i did not feel like great playing ko like i had the deck i have some reps into it but like every time i've played it in paper it just i don't it doesn't do the thing there's a couple like decision trees that i just don't have mapped out um and i think i like fall into pit traps um and it kind of derails me a bit so i was like you know what instead of playing the calling i'll just go do side events i was handing out packs to people everyone i play um maybe if there's someone you know uh maybe we've played in the past i i do like this weekend it was wtr unlimited packs uh with the qr code and all that jazz um so that was fun dude and shapeshifter sealed uh that's another thing if you're not like you're not looking to play the calling or the pro tour, you know, you're not qualified for the pro tour. Uh, that's another thing that I would like to reiterate is like, don't make that be a thing that keeps you from coming to these events. Like if it's not a lot of trap, you know, like if you can make it to them, like go and like play side events. Um, Shapeshifter sealed was a lot of fun. They took out Dory because <laughs> it was just Dory Kadachi's like default. You just piled it together. So they didn't give you a WTR pack. So you couldn't play Dory and it made the format really fun. So if you are at one of these big events and you're not a like calling, if that's just not your scene, the competitive scene, um, always recommend checking out Shapeshifter Sealed. So, and then Sunday I did some hanging did out. We did some talking, stuff like that. So. They've done a lot better job with the prize wall as well. Like, oh, and just like yeah. making like the side events worth it. I think like these, like the epots and the uh the sigil like side events are some of the best because it just like encourages participation. And then the prize wall actually having like decent stuff on it um also makes people like want to like go out there and try to get tickets. Yeah. Um I remember going to the calling uh Cincinnati and it was like you're grinding tickets for a big card or a play mat because the uh, uncut sheets were like snap gone. So um, uh, I want to catch up and chat real quick. Uh, Victor saying, go pick up your flame scales now. Hmm. Um, I think it's, you can probably it's wait. A weeks early. I yeah, would, I was going to say I would like, pick up a flame scale furnace the instantly or like Three days after we get the LL announcement. <laughs> I agree. Because that um, stuff will drop real fast. Um, my experience from my store right now is that people are still picking up Dromai staples to play her that first week. I'm selling Burn the Malls. I am selling um, Dragon still. So I, I think I don't actually know the price of Flamescale Furnace right now off the top of my head. But... Only one way to find out. I imagine it will go lower. Uh, but I think Victor's probably... That's what Victor means, is like... Middle of April. Start looking at it. Um, and to your point, I don't have a cold foil. So I will definitely be picking up a cold foil when it takes that LL hit. For sure. Um, Let's see. Top Hazard... Tom Hazard. Oh, yes. It was nice playing you too, man. Um, I'm glad you got a super rare out of that pack. I was telling everyone I gave a pack to, I was like, yeah, there's a tunic in there. Hopefully. Dude, one of the one of the guys uh, I gave a pack to opened the Easter egg. Oh, sick, dude. He had a awesome. sink blow and an Easter egg. I was like, dude, that's a sick pack. That's a sick pack. Um, all right. So TCG low right now is $61, but like basically since like last week that have been selling right about like 62 to 64 bucks. Um, yeah, so I think this, it's got a ways to come down still too. Um, cold foils are still foils, like 150. Once she LLs, I would imagine rainbow foils could see like forties actually. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Six is unplayable. Than I thought it would be, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Fly, fly is actually unplayable. So yeah. Oh wait, yeah. is that the new meme? <laughs> Just draconic, draconic heroes. Next. Deck unplayable. 
Dude, I think I think Vi is like marginally playable. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, when you can just at do least East, you can play. You're you're playing Art of War, right? So it's like yeah, you're doing powerful stuff. Any um, any deck that has like ten plus percent representation, but like fails to like routinely convert into the top eight at like, or even to like the top cut, like or day two. Um, Actually, they, the drone might always convert it into day two and then should never show up in top eight. Um, yeah. That was that was always my biggest issue with the deck. I still think it's fake. Um, only one, do only one showed up in top eight and then like basically like luck sacked the sigil to win. No, I'm not taking anything away from Arthur. Arthur played a dude. That guy played out the, of his damn mind, dude. Oh, hundred percent. He like, definitely listen. needed that right on top at that right moment. But still, like I watched the so I I'm currently rewatching the top eight, and the first game against that KO was insane. Like he he somehow that KO clawed back tempo. Like I it felt like two or three times under twenty health when they were both under twenty. I was like, how is he surviving still? I'm like, oh my god, he's still attacking. So. I've not I've not watched I only watched the final so far. Um and man. Uh, that was a great game. That was just a great yeah, game of Flesh and Blood. Great. It was called so well. Um can we also like take a minute to pour one out for Brian Gottlieb? Oh, um yeah. Brian, I know you'll never listen, but we we here on the buy list love you. Um wait, we've wait, never wait, 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 hold on. We gotta take that back. I know that's like our meme template is like, we know you'll never listen, but I talked to Brian on Saturday and he's like, yo, I, and I was like, yeah. So we had uh Carol on the podcast and he like stopped me mid sentence. He's like, yeah, I watched it. I was like, Oh, what? Cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Did he get us mixed up? I'm pretty sure no one knows who we are. <laughs> what? No. Shout out. He was, God he was one of the, he was one of the guys that was like, yeah, I know who you are. And I was like, right all right <laughs> like, dude listen gottlieb just became my favorite dev lead yeah, developer i think he's the only lead developer but right. he just became Sorry, my favorite <laughs> dude carol's not a lead he's not the lead he's developer lead. yet you just said dev um, all right sorry, sorry 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 carol number one brian number two james white our lord and savior um but like uh, it's it is a very sad day that the community has basically like lost a I don't like a, a source of information and just like general discourse. Um, yeah, I guess I if, think, you, if chat, if you're listening or watching this back later, a little before we before we skip right past it, uh, yeah. we're talking about Brian's announcement today that he is officially leaving uh, Twitter slash X. Um, it's Twitter. I refuse to call it X. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, it's a bummer, dude. It is. He, like, one, people do need to get good at limited. Um, just have you considered not sucking? And then instead of wasting your time bitching on X about limited, maybe get good and then you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I agree I with know. that take of his as well. Um, but, like, in all reality, like, he shared a lot of, like, information and reasoning on Twitter and, like, generally like gave a lot of like good insight um in his interactions and i like hope he doesn't take a step back from like doing podcasts and stuff oh, maybe we should ask brian if he wants to do a podcast yeah i was thinking about it because he did say that his dms will be open for scheduling interviews and stuff so yeah we could do that um we could yeah try. or went out for him um so i don't yeah, know where i was going with that should like we open one of these things yeah, we could. Let's do it. Want to do one? All right. So this one, I'm ninety percent sure came from Legends, um, which was the second one. I know one of the guys um, wanted me to let him know when I opened it. So I don't know how to get in contact with you, but bro, I'm opening it. All right, you're good. Please don't suck. Be another romping club. You gotta put it up to the camera. Okay. Well, dude, if it's another here. romping club, that will be amazing. All right, you have to seal is cracked. Oh, oh, nice crucible of aether weave. That's, that's a good one. 
Yeah, that's a good one. The gold really works well with that card. Yup, dude, it looks sick. I actually sold mine at Pro Tour LA. Did you really? How much? I sold it for six fifty. Oh, I was hoping for more than that. It, uh, yeah. So, we'll see. Was that the one that I gave you? No, it was one that I picked up. Okay. Um. The, uh, yeah, so gold foils are just not that. Sp- yeah, gold foils are kind of depressed right now. Um, I think back to back, like very close seasons yeah. are like hurting the value. Yeah, for sure. I tried selling it for a long time and it was just uh, just not moving, even with Kano's popularity. Yeah. I think the people that like to collect them all, like Pokemon, are mm-hmm. kind of chilling out a bit. That's uh, what I get the sense. Yes, I agree. Or you have to be directly connected to them, like be on the runaways <laughs> and no saint. Good place to be. <laughs> it's like, hey, I got one foils. of these again. And he's like, buy it. <laughs> Ship it. And then he's like, Ted who? Yep. Um, so that's cool. That's a good hit, though. That's that's not yeah. a bad hit. Like, I'm happy with that there's one. Worse. There's worse. Yep. Um, so... I think Nate, we can talk a little bit about we got you're gonna open the second one too. Right now? No, later. Oh. Yeah, later I can. Okay, cool. Uh um, I one? think I think we should talk a little bit about I guess we kind of talked about it um with like Dude, it's not Coat of Frost. It is not Coat of Frost. No, it is not. Yeah. Um well before we get into the next topic, if you have questions, throw them in chat for us and then we'll catch mm-hmm. up to them after we talk a little bit about what the meta will look like and what Dromai does, Dromai LL and does to the market and kind of get an idea of where we're going. Because there's a couple big factors and it's not just Dromai LLing. Miss Vale is also going to bring, they've already told us that Miss Vale is going to bring an Olympia card. And I think Olympia is probably pretty solid and he just needs like a a pair card. Did they? Yeah. When they, they say that? A celebration of both Brian and James White, um, all but confirmed that he's getting his like card in the expansion slot. Also, I, they uh, said he was going to get support. I like to me. I read that as. I think. Was, I think he might be an armory deck, and he might get support there. That also could happen as well. Um, I'm hoping that the next armory deck that's not announced is not a heavy hitters deck, honestly. I would like to see it to be a misfail deck, just to kind of you no know No shot. No shot. <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> I don't think it's a no shot, but there's no shot. I I think they bring back one of the elemental heroes with another armory deck. Whoa. Well, one of the elemental talents. I think that's why they banned Crown of Seeds, right? So they hit Crown of Seeds, which there is no reason to ban that card right now. Like, whatever. The, like, it's not even playable right now. Why would, would you ban you, a card that's not would, even playable? Yeah, I would argue that the reason to ban Crown of Seeds right now is because nobody's listening. It, but the, the, it's also the reason why they banned Berserk. They're just getting ahead of the problem. I understand. So they, they banned they're... Berserk because obviously, like, the cards they printed in that KO deck are legitimately nuts to butts broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that chess pieces would be pretty gross with Berserk, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That in the freaking one for five they decided to print. Like, all right, Mr. Gottlieb. <laughs> Mr. Gottlieb, I got some questions for you. Um, as soon as I saw that one for five, I was like, I literally, in our team chat, I just I wrote I will not play KO 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 I will, play KO, I, will I swore off KO after the Pro Tour yeah. then never again am I playing this deck and then they printed a blue one for five that blocks for three and I'm like <laughs> Jesus give me strength yeah um, I think it signaled I I love those spoilers because it signals that the that armory deck is a real deck. Like oh, that, that deck's gonna slap you some can just cheeks. Buy it and just like go and win some games in an armory. That's pretty sick. Um, yep. But so there's a couple factors, right? I think we can talk about Dromai LLing because that's gonna be the biggest factor in the market. Yep. Um, 
obviously, you know, there's things that are going to happen. We already talked about, uh, we already talked about furnace is going to be affordable and it's probably, it's a solid card. It's a, it's a good card to have in your collection. Um, if you can, if you have the means right upgrade to cold foil and at the end of April, cause it'll be very affordable. It should be somewhat affordable or it should come down. Right. Um, but also she is, she's not warping the meta like prism did, but she does, she does skew, um, she does skew some matchups. Right. And mm -hmm. with her leaving, we're going to see some other decks rise up or just become more popular. And then the market's going to shift a little bit to respond to that. Right. So Nate, who do you think, what heroes, what decks do you think are going to kind of, or where do we see it shift? Let me go pull up that very, uh, Jason asked a very similar question. Like what heroes was from my gatekeeping? Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to go create a new deck. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shorter list is probably like, what was like, am I not gatekeeping? Um, Arachne might actually be a real deck um there's like a non-zero chance that that's a real deck um azalea was i don't think she was gate kept much by dromai but like very not great matchup into dromai yeah. well i mean the the other one too is prism right prism's matchup into dromai was like yes zero <laughs> yeah prism prism gets a lot better all the warriors get a lot better um dory was the oh, best in good. Dor dory was already good into dromai but like the hatchets plan does not like have to designate as many sideboard slots not to dromai yeah. um i think like decks like uh canoe like canoe is like an actual f coin flip uh kano for for those uncultured and don't know how to pronounce his name um but canoe, um, uh, who else? Olympia, obviously. <laughs> Rip, uh, Rip Tide, because uh, everyone's playing that deck. Uh, Sir Bolton breaking a Breaker of Dawn. Um, Taklovasen, Yazuri. Um, so many decks were like just kind of like a little sus to play into a meta where we expected probably ten to fifteen percent of the field being Dromai. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of decks that get uh, unlocked. Like Riptide is like no cap, a legitimate deck. It, it was funny that like we already had such like an open meta, and it's like the only hero that I think is like actually unplayable now is probably Vincent. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Betsy, sorry, Betsy. Yeah, Betsy Betsy's also very un unplayable. Betsy also unplayable, but like Olympia is like no cap actually like that hatchets deck olympia it's like why aren't you playing dory but like at the end of the yeah. day you do get up the ante which is kind of hot yeah and then he'll get some gold something to do yeah. with his gold um yeah i mean i think she yeah prism prism definitely warped some things more than drum i did but like you said you listed off like <laughs> you listed off more decks than i thought but i mean it all makes sense right even viscerai is I found that out the hard way last night at my armory. Viserai, <laughs> that is not a fun match anymore. Uh, it used to be very fun with Thorn and, uh, you know, Shrills and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, right. yeah, Drif it'll be interesting. Drifter, Drifter said, new Prism doesn't gatekeep Dory. Um, a little bit, but here's the trick into new Prism. Um, just block. Yeah, you just block. Just, just block them. Because, like, half the time, they only have one Herald in their hand anyways. Because, like, half their deck doesn't block or do anything. It's, like, just a bunch of aura garbage. Yeah. And then the... So, it's, like, one Herald. You full block it, and it's, like... Why is passing that? Mirage Pass. Did my video stop? Yeah, your video stopped. Uh -oh. Hold, please. Did you do uh -oh. something? Did my computer break? No, you're still here. But yeah, I've heard that too. Is that you just block the first herald and you never let them search, and then you break the second one if you can, I guess. Oh, You're oh, back. Oh. 
Okay, my computer had a stroke. Sorry. Um, there we go. So yeah, if you just don't let them search, you should be okay. Which is a, a, again, it can be a little tricky, but just kill kill Soraya, um, kill Arclight Sentinel because you don't have any other option, and then kill Genesis, and you'll be fine. Dude, I got Arclighted this weekend. It was Dude, like the first time in two years. And I was a jabron in a side event. It was like the first side event. And I was just like kind of, I was just not. It was like, I was like, I'm here for my epot. And then I'm going to go see James White. Like full disclosure, I told my opponent. And I was like, Tunic. And she's like, respond to Tunic Arclight. And I was like, cool. <laughs> I'm going to go get in line. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I'm like, dude, yeah. I know. Like, it was just like a flashback. I was like, yeah, I remember this yeah. card now. Um, yep, Spectra. What a fun and interesting mechanic. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was fun. Um, but yeah, I think you know, we got we got some stuff coming up, man. There's like there's some big events in this game that are gonna shift some shift the meta. I think it's only gonna get mm -hmm. like you said. I think it's gonna get more open, which is kind of wild. Whew. Um, and then we got Miss Veil vale on top of that. Like it, those new heroes, man. I don't know how we make chi yet, but uh, I'm going to go on the record to say it won't be very often or it'll be very hard to make chi because those powers be they have are nuts. All right. News sucks. Can we all can, one? OK, so I'm a little concerned. Of LSS, like leaning straight up into the hooker mechanic. <laughs> um, like this is a this is a mechanic that TCGs have implemented since the dawn of time to to trap all the waifus, um, right? The weebs are they weebs? The waifus uh, yeah. are the the waifus, waifus are the the, a the interest. Yeah, she is a waifu. Everyone else is the weebs. They like like unapologetically just made her a hooker. Um, and I used to play Dragon Ball Super, and I would have to play against people who just had massive ass titties on their playmat. And it made me uncomfortable <laughs> as a grown man. That I don't want to live in a world where I'm uncomfortable playing flesh and blood because someone's got some massive ass new titties on their playmat. Yeah. Don't be that guy. Yeah, don't be that guy. Or gal. <laughs> Please. Yeah, it... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit... It's the... A little concerning, a little, yeah. That's well, not what I'm here I mean, for. I'm here fair, to play cards and not look at titties. <laughs> Meanwhile, the thumbnail for this video is. <laughs> <laughs> is that why we have 15 viewers? Just because yes. titties. <laughs> you, all you out there. <laughs> That's why yeah, we got you. I got you with the new thumbnail. Got him. Um, got him. I I have jokingly told Ted that we would get more viewers if he just pulled out his tits more often. <laughs> That's messed up, man. It's messed up, but true. <laughs> um, yeah. So we, we are uh, about fifty minutes in. This is basically what the end of the podcast is for everybody. Yeah. Full, full yeah, cook mode. The, yeah. If you have more questions, get them in now. I guess fifty minutes is longer than I thought, man. Time flies when we haven't been. Wait, this is the first we, time we've talked. In I know it's been a while. Um. Uh, oh, can we go back to, so new actually sucks. Uh, sorry, I went on my like, um, yeah, yeah. why is she a hooker rant? Um, okay, so imagine a hero where you have to save up this mystical chi energy. And then what you get to do at the end of that is you get to play your opponent's cards that they don't even want to play. <laughs> You're playing blues. Ain't nobody trying to cast blues around here. Uh, like everyone's like Terra Sunder, Terra Sunder, Thunderquake. It's a combo, and it's like great two decks. You have a combo in the two decks, and all that all they have to do is just side out their Terra Sunders, and you're, you're just playing crappy Thunderquakes. I think you're, I think you're forgetting one key component to this. What is that? Even a blue when it's free, it's pretty good. Not when you have to save up all this okay. chi energy, which is it depends. It depends. If it's like ridiculously hard, then yeah, okay, maybe it's a question. But if it's like once every three turns, uh, that's pretty good. I'm I'm I actually think that the oh, sorry. I mean, I get what you're saying. Like the there's you're you're gonna run into a lot of the times where you're like that blue is not worth spending my chi on. 
Okay. All right. So yes, blue Macho Grande is scary. Now let's go through all of the decks and see what blues you're like actually excited to play. Arachne. Yeah, there's a ton. Course of, of tendency. There's, okay. Yeah. Course there's of tendency and surgical. Of surgical are, distraction. Yes. Yes. That, bad example. <laughs> Azalea. Knock yeah. the death with knock the death whistle. You get to search your deck and put an air on top. That's sick, dude. Uh, Betsy, sure, Guardian crap. Dash IO. You get to play a backup protocol blue. How sick is that? <laughs> Crank it. Get an action point back. Now you have two action points. Dope. Dash IO. You get you get to play blue T bone, bro. That's awesome. Blue throttle at the best case. There's definitely a lot of decks where you're like, eh. Dorinthia, Iron Song. You get to kill people with blue Iron Song response. Now that's sick. Dromai. There ain't no blues in that deck, and that deck's unplayable anyways. Because it will be LL'd. Yep. Enigma. Doesn't matter. She's not a real hero yet, so we don't even know what kind of blues. She'll probably actually play good blues, so that's actually maybe relevant. Vincent uh, has decent blues if you got an annihilation. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get an annihilation. But then, like, if it's in her banish zone already, why wouldn't she just play it herself? Because she's awful. And <laughs> can't get the four rune chance. You ain't uh, wrong. Bye. You get to play stab wound blue or whatever other crappy blue two attack. Um, Kano, you get to play Aether Arc blue. Awesome. Love that yeah, for you. Those are not great. Yep. Kasai, you get to play oh, like a time snap or something, or like a epot. Sure, you can take it. Why is there an epot in their banish zone that they didn't play? Is you, my question. Because you threw it off the top. You have to get a blue off the top to keep continue her ability. Oh, you have to hit a blue off the top? She's yeah. even worse than I, I thought. I'm pretty sure. Maybe my syntax is wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it says like. Look at top of card, banish blue card. Then you may play. I don't think it says then you may play, but it says for the rest. If it, of the if it says if it's blue, banish it. Period. Until end of turn, you may play blue cards, dude. If you have to hit the blue, that's she's Wait, actually the worst player in the game. I don't game. think you have to. I don't. Okay, great. You then you don't have to. Though. Whatever. Uh, Kasai, you get to play like blue overpower, other crappy warrior blues. Um, Katsu, you get to play blue dishonor. Imagine if you can combo blue bonds into blue dis <laughs> like into dishonor. Okay, That's we, a combo. I think I think we all get it that she is very good into some decks and not good into others. But that I can keep going. We'll have to see what her kit does. Oh, Garbage. Her banishing all of the cards off of the chain link is all the action <laughs> cards is something, I guess. What's funny is it like makes it unplayable for Leviah. That's actually like another matchup where Leviah is just like, I don't get to play the game. Yeah. Because oh, she could never fill her grave. Surprise grade. is going to become the meta now. You just sideboard in Nasty Surprise into. Uh... It gets banished, not discard, oh, so it doesn't yeah. trigger. Whatever. Yeah. Never Unlucky. Mind. Sell Nasty Surprise. Don't listen to Sell it. List. Ship it. Um. All right. So do we get any more questions? Because I think we're officially hit that point of the podcast. Where I'm just rambling Where madness. We're just like we make no sense anymore. Dude, speak for yourself, dude. I make a ton of oh, sense. There's 15 of you in here. 16. Wow. Thank you all for hanging out. Please like, subscribe, do the do. All right. So hot take. Chi actually comes from a chi tunic. <laughs> it's gonna be a piece of equipment. They're gonna replace tunic with chi tunic. That would be hilarious. They did Where was say, that? Um, I don't know if we talked about it, Nate, on Sunday, but they did say on the rules, um, and they have it in the live blog too, so if you guys want to go check out the live blog, uh, the rule Q&A uh, uh, panel that I went to with Brian Gottlieb and James White, that they said that Balance of Justice is the first legendary where they put in a design rule or a design check it's not a rule per se, right? I don't think they're going to do this for like, as a certainty, but um, they are checking legendary power levels or not even power levels, but just usage against the staples, right? So the staples they mentioned, the crown of Providence, tunic and snapdragon scalers. So when they print, like they explained it to in a way where, okay, we made this new, we made this new mystic leg legendary 
does it just does it ask a strong enough question to be to replace Snapdragon scalers? Or is it just like default Snapdragon? And then so on and so forth for the other two, right? Spring Tunic. I think Tunic and Crown of Providence are more interesting than Snapdragons because like Snapdragons is used. Yeah, it's ubiquitous, but it's not as staple. Like just, yeah, just play Tunic in this. It's the best, right? We see that a lot with decks. So I'm really curious to see what legendaries they're coming up with that um, make you question using Tunic. And then also Crown of Providence, which I think balance is like an absolute home run. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see more cards that do what balance of justice did with Crown of Providence. I was surprised to see how many decks were like solo balance. Um, oh, really? Well, the Runaways uh, Axis deck was solo balance. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you're thinking you're going to play nothing but KOs, then yeah. That makes sense. Dude, it's so good. It, it's like... <laughs> balance is... So, balance is really good into, like, Romai, but she's dead and fake. Um, and, like, the Ninjas... The worst brutes. Um, it's just like, it's just like pretty reasonable into like so many decks. Yeah, Savage Sass is definitely a brute replacement for Tunic. It's pretty good. Um, I, it's questionable, but it's close. Um, Madi had a question that we missed. What, what did Madi next... want? What do you want, Madi? It says, "What's the next hero to LL after Dromai?" I don't know. Do I look like I do math? Um, That's a good question. I think I would say. I think it's Dash. Dash is I the think... closest, but does she does she start accumulating points fast enough? Yeah, she just has to like random. So Dash and Fire are like the next closest, but Dash is like that hero. It's kind of like Dromai, where like Dash is fake, but like not really. Um, like I think Dash is definitely good enough to like randomly win a calling, put herself up there, and like Pokemon season she can kick herself out. Yeah, it's. I don't think it'll happen happen until like after. Um, but it's, I did not realize there's 25 heroes on the roster. That is wild. Yeah, that's why we're about setting to things up, brother. I know. Yeah. Well, we gotta go fast. Um. So it's definitely a possibility. Uh, I would not rule it out. Yeah, Dash seems Dash still does action cheaty things. Yes, Dash is still hard for it, but it's the most. Yeah, she's still one point oh, right? So, so like one of one of my teammates was pretty high on Dash, but it's not good into um, Gromai. And it's not, you have to kind of play like a switchy board because like boosting into KO is fine, but the KO can like wow. randomly fatigue you if they board out all their pearls. Um, but it, like the aggressive plan is pretty, pretty good into them. Yeah. So, hmm. oh. um, right, should we open this last? Yeah, let's open this last gold foil and then get out of here. All right. Do, 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 do. The All right is there, they want. This is the one. They don't have any predictions. Oh yeah, while we're while Nate's opening this, miss fail predictions. Well, any predictions on the gold foil? Oh yeah. Was, dude, I just had a random thought while you're opening that. Like, what if the fables like pitched and made a chi? I was like, it's like, well, hold up, that might be too strong. That might be too strong. Like, stop right there. Okay. All right. Oh, how do I do this? I'll just do it like this. Do it sideways so we all see it at the same time. I'll just pull it out. Ready? Does anyone have any predictions? There's 15 of you. Someone has to guess what Ooh, it is. I got an Ember Blade coming in. Ember Blade. Love it. Is it I'd be pretty happy with an Ember Blade. My Dude, prediction honestly, is Arcane Lantern. 
Dude, Arcane Lantern would be sick. I would be happy with Arcane Lantern. I... Ooh, Null Rune. Dude, Let's Courage see. of Bladehold would be sick. Snaps would be insane. Snaps, um, that would be real jelly. Um, Either the dash, like the pistol, or the, the booties. Um, all right, three, two, one. Hey! Oh, oh no boots. I guess they're no. not the worst. Dude, you're so lucky. Let, okay, so like I would not be mad at that because you dodged hood and chest. Yeah, no room boots ain't bad. No room boots are well actually no, because they used to be guardian, but well they still are, right? They still are yeah, it's the guardian. It's, it's the guard. Um and it's like the, the feet of choice for like the hatchet stack. Um yeah. There's definitely worse things in the world. I have one. Should I open it, Nate? Narun? Yeah, dude, let's go. You're giving me the itch now. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ah. You picked this one up at Pro Tour, right? Yeah. Uh, no, this one I picked up. Uh, this is the season four. Maybe. I think arms are arguably the best one they get. Do I have the Narun's not? What you talking about handies for? <laughs> I got him. Wait. Dude, when are my when are my heat seekers gonna be a million dollars? Yeah. I bought I think you missed the heat seeker boat, brother. Dude, I bought all these in at Calling Indie when I was like on a tear with uh Ice Lexi. No one no one was putting respect on the name. No one was putting respect on the name of Ice Lexi. Ice Lexi was never really I finished like 20 seconds at that calling with Ice Lexi. I take that back. She I actually Ice Lexi was scary. Um and if the like okay, so I'm actually switching it up. So this is the one I'm gonna open. This is a Road to Nats 2024. So it's got a little bit of extra extra thingies in it. And then the ProQuest for Season 4 one that I have left. This will be another raffle coming up soon. You going for that Centauri Saber? Yeah. I guess so. Oh, snap. Right. Oh, man. This is exciting. exciting. Um, have you opened one of these for yourself yet? Yeah, I opened that crucible. Oh, yeah. oh, um, really wait, now okay. I almost. So I I it. bet I bet you get a Centauri saber. That'd be kind of cool. Let's see. Do we like throw some predictions in there, folks? Easy clap. All right. This is actually kind of hard to do, and now I see why you are struggling. Hatchet. Oh, hatchet not available but that would be sick that would sell for one million dollars all right wait yeah this is awkward yeah yes <laughs> i'll take it what'd you get Look up. Oh, dude, that's sick. Do you want to trade? <laughs> uh, I do not. <laughs> I'm so jelly. Gambler's gloves, dude. It's a majestic. Dude, that's sick. That's a sick hit. I was not expecting majestic, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, that's right. You don't see me, right? I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, I'm watching on YouTube. That's how I, I had to see it. Gambler's gloves, gold foil, dude. Gamby wow. gloves. All right, I'm happy. All right. Well, All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming watching. Um, is this? I don't know if uh, Roger gave me this this outro. Um, remember, everybody. To I'm gonna I'm gonna give Roger partial credit. Uh, I don't think this is the exact We're outro he gave me. Manners anymore. No, yeah, he told me oh. I couldn't steal it. Unlucky, oh, really. That's right. He did comment that he was gonna put a cease and desist on us. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to um, get into a legal battle with Roger. But uh, thanks, everybody. If you could like, subscribe, hit all the buttons. 
Uh, and remember, everybody, you got to put your money where your mouth is. Peace. Peace.